basic Excel. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another session of uh, Microsoft Excel. We're going to be looking at basic Excel today, and this is going to be for beginners, people who are new to Excel. And it would be around, you know, understanding your workbook, your spreadsheet, what it does, the different functions, how to get data on your spreadsheet, how to, we're going to touch on some simple, simple formula. We're going to show you how to edit. I'm going to show you how to format. So when you have an Excel, this, what you're looking at on the screen is a basic Excel. This is called a spreadsheet and it's divided into grids. The columns are, you have the columns numbering from A to like, you know, it goes on and on. You can get A to B, Z, Z, Z. And then you have all your rows all the way down. So these are your rows. So you have one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to, you know, several thousands all the way down. And this is what you call a spreadsheet. It's divided into grids. So these are grids. And all these grids, they have addresses. And the address of, of your cell is the letter and the number. So for instance, let, let me start uh, with a blank spreadsheet. So I would create a blank one. So this is a blank spreadsheet, nothing, I've not added anything to this. Like I was saying, this cells are all have addresses. This one right here is A1, and you can see it here in the formula bar. So it shows the address here. If I click anywhere else, this is J5, and it's just a combination of your column and your row. Anywhere you click has an address. So if you refer, if you, if you put a formula and refer to that particular cell, it would pick up whatever is in that cell. It's just like, you know, like an address. You're saying, look at this particular cell. And then it goes there. Spreadsheets are very useful uh, and they are very flexible to use. Like if you do a lot of calculations, you can actually put a lot of formulas on spreadsheets to actually do basic calculation. But before we start that, we're going to start with imputing on a spreadsheet. So you have a spreadsheet and you want to get data on. All you need to do is click on, click anywhere on the spreadsheet and start typing. So I usually like uh, make a simple list. You're going to the shop, let's assume we're going to Tesco and you need to make a shopping list. So I'm going to Tesco, I need to buy milk. And you can see me moving from one cell to the other. I'm pressing the enter button to move from one cell to the other. And if you want to move to any other cell, you can just click on it or press enter. So this is my list. I'm making a simple shopping list. I just need to get data so that we can start working with the data and start formatting. So I have milk, I have water, I have uh, probably water. And this is just the uh, Apples, bananas. So I've made a simple uh, spreadsheet. Someone says they can't see my screen. I hope everyone can see my screen. Oh, uh, probably you need to like go out and go back in. So we have banana and. Uh, Let's just put a few more items here on, on the list. So, uh, cheese and uh, candy. Okay. So this is my shopping list from, a, I'm going to Tesco. I have a, probably I have a budget and uh, I want to like, and I know the cost of these items. So let's assume milk, is uh, two pounds, butter is it? I'm just gonna put random numbers here. Uh, 
five and five two. And uh, so this is this is this this is the price per item that I'm buying. And uh, quantity. I'll put my quantity here. So I'll buy three bottles of milk or five wraps of water and just enter and so what we can do with this is a simple table in excel so i have my price on column d i have the quantity i want to buy on column e i'm going to show you with this data what oh uh, these buttons this uh, taskbar what you can use them for so the first one I'm going to show you is the, this is the home button and it has your basic formatting tools. So you have the home, you have the insert, you have your page layout, you have formula, you have data, review, view, and help. So if we start with the home, this is where your font is. So you can easily change the font of this data. And all you need to do before you do anything is select, if you click, wherever the data is, you can easily change the fonts here to any fonts you want, and you can change the size here. You can use this to make it bold. You can use this to change to italics. You can underline with this. And you want to like put it in the form of a table. I want, I want it to have grid lines can just select and the way I select data in Excel is you click on the first one you want to select. Don't release your mouse button and you click with your mouse, your left mouse down. Don't release it and then just drag it to wherever you want to select. Any area you want to select, just click the first cell. Don't release your mouse button and drag it. And you can see my selection. Click anywhere. Don't release your mouse button and you'll see the selection. In this case, I want to select this data that we have typed and I want to put it in, I want to put a grid around it. So these are my borders. You can use any of this. I want all borders. So I'll put borders around it. You can change the type of border you have by clicking anyone here. If you want to put thick outside borders, I want to put thick outside borders around here. I will just click this. And uh, this is your fill. You want to color, you can pick any color here. This is your, this is the color of your font. You can use this to change the color of your font. These are, this is the alignment bit here. So you want to align. To the left, I'm just going to drag this a bit. You can align this to the left. You can put it in the middle. Can you see the apples moving? And you can put it on the left. So all these are formatting tools that make your data look very nice and very presentable. You can also use the alignment here. So this would align it to the top. This will align it in the middle, and this would put it at the bottom. And the good thing is, once you put your cursor on any of these things, you will see what it does. So it will show you what that is going to do. And also, you can also wrap your text. And what wrap text does is, if you have a, like a long sentence, for instance, uh, I'm going shopping today. You can see that this is my cell. What I've typed here is longer than the cell. And if I type anything here, for instance, you won't see what I've typed in here. You can use this wrap text to actually wrap that text within that cell. So what it does, it contains it within the cell and you would see. So if you click on wrap text, you can see that it would expand that cell to actually bring everything you have typed in it. It will make everything you have typed in it visible. I'm just going to delete this. So that's wrap text. And you can, if you click it again, you reverse what you have done. 
if you need to like merge cells together, you can use merge and center. So if you have two cells, so this is a cell, this is another cell. If you need to merge these two cells together or these three cells, select the cells, click merge and center. And you can see that this is merged. I'm gonna color it so you can see. So this is merged and you can click again to remove that. We have uh, the copy button, the cut button here. So if you need to like transfer data from one bit to another, you can use your cut or you can use your copy button. So I'm going to delete all this. So we have typed this. I want another list. I don't want to type it again. I can just do a copy. So click the copy. Click anywhere else you want to place that data and click paste. And then you have copied that data. I'm going to undo. This is the undo button. If you want to cut data, you want to move it from one place to the other, select the data, click cut, place it where you want it, and click paste. And you have completely moved that data to a new place. One other thing you can do with Excel is you don't even have to use your copy or cut function. You can literally drag that data to wherever you want it to go. So the first thing you do always is select the data. You select the data. And then if you look at the oh, this corner here, the bottom right corner, if you place your cursor on that, can you see my cursor changing? <coughs> from a solid cross to a thin cross. So once it changes, click, press your left mouse button down. Well, that's if you want to drag. Once you select, click on it. Can you see my cursor changing? So when I put it on it, it changes to this like cross with arrows. And that is when it's ready to be dragged. Then you press your mouse button down and move it to wherever you want it to be. I'm going to undo that and do that again. Select the data, place your cursor on it towards the edge. You can see it changing to like a cross with the arrow. And then press your mouse down and move the data. So I've just moved the data. And you can, for the columns and the rows, you can actually expand them by dragging. So you need to make, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, all you need to do is place your cursor in between the columns. Then it changes. Once your cursor changes, you know it's, it's gonna do something different. Press your mouse button down and drag, and that is expanding the column. I'll do that again. Place it in the middle, press your mouse button down, drag it. You can do the same for row. Place it in between two rows and drag. I'm gonna drag the milk row. This bin here is a number editing. So we can edit our numbers by using all these functions here. And these are all shortcuts. You can also open, open up uh, the dialog, the box to get more functions. But for now, on the basic level, we're just gonna use the basic functions on this tax bar. So we're going to Tesco and uh, I've typed in price, I've typed in the quantity. Looking at this, we don't know if, this, if the price if it's in pounds or dollars. So we want to differentiate between this price and the quantity by putting like a currency sign on it. And all you need to do is format that number. If you look at this button here, you can see something that looks like coins and notes. That is your currency formatting. And you can literally just select what you want. In this case, I'm going to select just three of them. And I would format, I'll add pounds to it. And that would add pounds to that. 
So I've added pounds to this. Let's add dollars to this one. Can add dollars. All you need to do is just change it to dollars. And uh, for more currency functions, you can actually open up the dialog box. If you go to currency, there are so many that you can pick here. So we can pick the, let's pick Spanish Euro. And that is it there. I want to change, so I, I'm formatting this. I want to change all these, the, the ones I have in dollars. I don't want dollars anymore. I want to change it to pounds. Instead of going here to change to pounds using the formatting, because I already have the format on the spreadsheet. So I have this format on the spreadsheet. And I want to format the rest like this two pounds. There's this brush air called the format painter. And what it does, it would, it would literally like paint the format from your selection to a new place. So I want to paint a for, the format from uh, two pounds to the dollar here. So I'll select the two pounds. I'll click on the format painter. And when I click on the format printer, if you look at my cursor, you can see that there's a paint brush attached to it. And what it means is that it's waiting to paint that format on anywhere else I click on. If I click on this eight, you can see that the eight has changed to pounds because I've, I've changed the format to what I add on the format brush. If I want to change this to dollar, I can take this format. Or rather, let, let me use this. So this milk here is colored, is bold, is in a different format. I want to copy this format to cheese. All I need to do is click on milk, that's to select it. Click on my format painter, and then I click on cheese. And you can see that that cheese now looks like the milk. So that just paints your format from one place to the other. And uh, you can make this bold. You can change, uh, you can literally change anything here. And uh, I'm just gonna go to my topics so I don't lose track of what I need to share. And to save in Excel, all you need to do is click on the file, save us, and you can literally save that document anywhere you want. Printing in Excel, when you have your data in Excel, if you go to the page layout, if you click on the print area, you can set where you want to print. So for instance, I want this on a page. I can select this and go to the print area and, and, and click set print area. And what it is is this will, when I send this to the printer, this will be on my page. And if you know, want to know the number of pages, the pages you have, there's a tab here, down here, called the page break preview. If you click on it, it will show you the pages you have. So like if you have data on several pages, it will sh show you what is going to print, what you're going to get per page. And you can drag this to where you want to print. So for it, so I don't want to print the whole shape. I just want uh, column A to E. So I've dragged that to make it smaller. I'm just going to undo that. So this blue buttons show what is going, this blue line shows what is going to print in Excel. And that is your print area. If you have data on several pages, I'm going to show you data. So if I click uh, on the print preview here, you can see my data on several pages. So I have, this is page one, I have page two down here. So this is gonna go on several pages. If I just want to print page one, I can select, I can just select this bit here. This is what I want to print for page one. And I can go to my print area and set print area. This is what I want to print. However, if you look at this, this, this blue line shows me what is going to print on page one. And this 
column here is going to go to page two. But I don't want that to go to page two. I want to print everything on one page. What I need to do is drag this blue line and drag it to the side. And then I have only one page. And this is what it's going to, uh, to print. So if you look at these ones that are not highlighted, if I send this document to the printer, it is not going to print. Only page one is going to print. If I want to print more, you can drag this. All you need to do is drag the blue line. And then I have a page two here that I can print. So if I send this, I will print two pages, page one and page two. And you can use all the print area to set that. If we go to margins and custom margins, this is all about printing, setting the page up to print. So you can adjust the size of your page on this page. If you want it to print in landscape, click landscape. You can adjust the size here. So this, with the way I've dragged it, this is 89% of a normal size. You can adjust this to like 100%. And this is our print preview. So you can see what you want to print before you print it. I'll go back and I'll go back to the margin. Your sheet, you can choose to print a spreadsheet with grid lines. So if you want all the grids to show just the way you're looking at it on the screen, you can click grid lines and then it will show the grid. If you have put it like, if you put borders around it, the borders will still show. If you have like a plain spreadsheet and you just want the grids to show, then you just need to select the grid, grid lines and it would print. You can set your margin, which is uh, the allowance you want for the top, the right, the left. So you can adjust this depending on what you're doing. And this is basically just how to print a spreadsheet. The most important part is to make sure that, you know, you, look, you use your uh, print preview to see what is going to print and what that is, how many pages you're going to get. And if you need to adjust that, then you can do that. I'm going to go back to the normal screen, which is this normal screen here is all at the bottom. Please let me know if you have any questions, if you just type it, then I'll pick the questions along the way. So a spreadsheet, let's put some colors in our spreadsheet just to make it look nicer. I can color the top bit here. Because I've used, I've, I've put different fonts here. I just want a single font. So I can use uh, this pepper font. I'll just copy the font and I'll just paste it on everything. And then I'm back with the normal font. Let's try some formula. So we're going to Tesco and we, we, are, we know the prices of the items and we know the quantity we want to buy but we don't know how much this is going to cost so that we have enough money. So we can do simple formula just to, just to cost this off and uh, to know the amount of money we need to take. Milk costs two pounds each and we're buying three. And this is, you can literally use this like a calculator. So if you have a calculator, you, you just punch it, it would be two times three on your calculator, right? It's the same for Excel. However, for Excel, you just have to start with an equal to. So if you start with an equal to, Excel expects you to put a formula in. So if on a calculator, I will say equal to two times three, right? Enter. And that will be correct. However, on Excel, because we already have the price and the quantity on this spreadsheet, all I need to do is I need to refer to the cells where those items are. So I will say equal to, I'll click on the price, which is the price for one times, I'll click on the quantity and enter. So what I've done is I've multiplied anything in cell C5, I've multiplied it by whatever is in cell D5. And that has given me six. So if we were using a calculator, then we'll punch and we'll start again and say five multiplied by eight. 
The difference in Excel is because I have the formula and it's just referencing this cell. So this formula, what it's saying is, look at, look at the cell beside you, multiply it by the cells, by two cells to the left. So two cells to the left multiplied by one cell to the left. So I can drag this formula down to calculate the, the cost of all the items on this spreadsheet. And all I need to do is put my cursor at this bottom angle and you can see it change. Press your left mouse button down and just drag that down. And what it has done is it has multiplied the price by the quantity for every item here. So the formula you put in is relative. So it's just referencing the cell. You're just saying, look, one, one cell to your left, look, multiply it by two cells to your left. And that is what it's going to do. So no matter where you drag this to, that is what it will continue to do. It will continue to look at cells, the cell to the left, multiplying it by the cell, two cells to the left. I'll delete this. So this is zero because obviously there's nothing to the left and there's nothing here. So it will come back with zero. And uh, so I have the price. I know that milk is going to cost me six pounds for three bottles. Water is going to cost 40 pounds. How much was it my total? And on the calculator, if you want to do a cal or if you want to use, do it on a calculator, it would be like equal to six plus 40 plus 18 plus 72 plus 24. But Excel, you can just put equal to, you can type some, which is a simple formula, just type some, open a bracket and just click on where you want it to sum. Just select it and close the bracket and enter. So all this, this is gonna cost us 331 pounds. Another way of doing it is you can do equal to, you can click on the cell plus, click on another cell plus, click on another cell plus, click on the next cell. And you can do it like this, but this is a very slow way of doing it because you can have like literally thousands of rows. So all you need to do is just open a bracket equal to sum of all these items. And if for any reason, like I want to, I want to like find an average or find an average of this items, I can also do equal to average. And once you start typing in Excel, it will bring you a couple of functions that I think you want to use. So I have average, average, open a bracket. These are my numbers. So my average is 36.78. I'm just gonna delete the average. I'll just put total here. And this is what I need. This is what I need to take to test school. If for instance, in this case, I don't have up to 331. I want it to fit within a particular budget. So let's assume my budget, let's say my budget, my budget is just 200 pounds and I don't want to spend more than 200 pounds. So I'm looking at what I can cut here. I'll just, I'll just change the format of this. So, uh, of all this, so it's all in pounds. So this is my budget, 200 pounds. And how much over budget am I in? I can do a simple minus subtraction. It would be equal to, this is my budget. I can just click on my budget, minus the total, enter. And I know that I'm over by 131 pounds. So how do I make this work? How do I make it fit within my budget? I can literally just say, okay, probably the, the butter I want to buy, this particular butter, I want to change the type of butter to the one that costs five pounds. You can just check, if you change that, if you type five pounds there, everything will recalculate because they are all referencing a formula. So you can see that the total has changed to 316 and I'm only over budget by 116. 
I don't, tomatoes, I don't want to buy nine. Probably I'll buy just one. And uh, I don't, I think I can do without the pepper. Maybe I'll make it zero. And you can see that it will just change. So you don't have to like duplicate what you have done. You can literally just work with your data as long as you have your formulas in to get what you want. So now we're on 212. I want, I will buy another type of apple. I will buy the one that costs two pounds as against the one that costs eight pounds each. I will change that to two. And now we are now within budget. However, at this point, and I remember that I forgot something. I forgot to add uh, oil to this list and I need it. So I can just add oil. Oil costs uh, five pounds per bottle and I need two bottles. And did you see what happened there? Because there was already a formula here. So it has already calculated it and it's added it to the total. And now I'm over by four pounds. So this, I'm over by four pounds. Maybe let's see what, what costs four pounds here. We can probably have uh, one apple as against the, uh, and now we have no difference. So we know that when we go to Tesco with 200 pounds, we can buy all these things on our list. I'm just gonna put this on a proper table just to make it nicer. Because when you, when you present in uh, Excel, you want to make it look nice. My total is here. I don't, it's too close. I want, I want space between the total and the items. What you can do in Excel, you can insert rows and column. And the way you do that is, if you click on the row, if you right click, it comes up with some options of things you might want to do. I want to insert a row between my this 200, which is my total and my table. I'll click here, insert. And you can see that I've inserted a row in between. If I want to delete a row, I want to delete that row, I'll right click. So when you right click on any cell, it will bring you options of what you think you want to do. I can delete that row. I'm just going to undo that because I want I want a row in between. And uh, I can make this board to show that it is my total. I can follow that to, to show that it's my total. I know this is my very this is my uh, variance between my budget and what I'm going to spend. If for instance, we want to now like uh, this is our Tesco price. We want to check what these items will cost in Asda, for instance. I can just do a copy. I can literally copy everything I've done here by selecting the row, right click, copy. So what I what I want to do is I want to copy everything I've done here and just paste somewhere else. So I'm copying the columns, and then I'll right click here insert copied cells. So when you copy, to know that you've copied that item, you will see this little line around the item you copied. And then when you right click, you can insert a copied cell and you can see the cell. So I have exactly what I have on the left, on the right. And in this case, I want to go to I want to go to Asda. So I can literally just change this to Asda. And probably the prices in Asda are different. And then you can do exactly the same thing you know, where you've done on this side, on the right side. You can also, you can also insert columns. You can delete columns. If you want to delete columns, select the column, right click, delete. So everything I have here, I want to delete. You can just select it, right click, delete. So 
So we've got selected rows, selecting columns, you know, and deleting data. So if you have any question, just uh, type it in and then I'll go through that again. We're changing for size or structure, okay. I'm gonna show some other editing functions. So we've got a, uh, I'm gonna select uh, this mail. There's some other editing functions that we can we can use. So all your cells here on the tax bar, you have them, you have more of them here. So you have your alignment, so you can align left, center, right. Your this is your vertical alignment, so you can move it to the top, you can move it to the middle, you can move it to the bottom. You can wrap text here, you can shrink to fill, to fill a particular cell, and you can merge cells here. You can change your font here as well. And then you have a preview, this is a preview here. So this is what it's going to look like when you change it. You can do a strike through. So like for instance, the pepper that we took off, we can, we might want to like, we might not want to delete it from the spreadsheet, but we want to do a strike through. So if you go to your font, you can just do strike through and okay. And that means, you know, I've literally just crossed out this pepe. I'm going to select the whole row and just do a strike through, which is my font strike through, and that's okay. And it doesn't change the number there. It doesn't mean that that number, that number is still there. So you can still calculate based on what is there. It's just a visual thing that you have a strike through across it. Okay. So you can do subscript. Um, select milk. Font. Well, we can do superscript, which is it will take it to the top. Subscript. I will just uh, show you what it looks like. We can do subscript, and then you see what it looks like. So there are many things we can do here. We can put the border around the table. But one thing to always remember is before you do your formatting, you have to select what you want to do, you have to select the data. So we can put borders like this one, let's put uh, this type of outline border. And then we have that type of outline border around it. So you can try just play with it. One thing we can also do is, if you look at this, these are decimal places. So we can increase the decimal places by just clicking this button, and then it will increase the decimal place. You can reduce it by clicking the button next to it. So if I don't want this price to show as 2.00, I can literally just do this. And then I've reduced the decimal place. I can select all of them and do it at the same time. However, I can just use my format printer and just, I can double, if I click it once, it pastes once. If I double click, you can paste it in several places. So I can continue to click and paste that. As long as you have that paint brush with your hoser, you can just continue to click and paint that uh, format on that cell. And to get rid of, of this uh, brush, you can either click it again or you press escape on your keyboard. So you can click it again and then you get rid of that or you press escape on your, key uh, on your keyboard. So we've done currency, we've done borders, or viewing the formula bar here. So we put some formula here and I need to show you where the formula bar is. So this is the formula bar. And what it shows is even though this is showing us sets in cell E5, what we have there is just, it is actually equal to C5 times D5. 
So this is the formula. This will always show you what you what you've actually typed in the cell, not what you are seeing on the spreadsheet. So for instance, if we click on this 200, we can see the sum, what we have typed here, which is sum of E5 to E14. And what, one other thing we can also do is we can copy formula from one place to the other. And formula will always reference the cells, not what you have, not what the actual thing you have typed in the cell. So for instance, if I, this sum here, I'm going to type something else. What if I saw put something else here on this side? So I want to add these numbers together. But instead of typing equal to sum of these numbers, I can literally just copy this formula I have here. So if I click on it, I can copy. And that's your copy button. And I can place it here. I'll just place it beside it and paste it. And what you would do is it would copy the formula. And what this formula is looking at, I can see it's looking at cell L5 to L14. So it's looking at cell L5, L5 to L14. However, I'm missing a number here. It's not. It has not included that five, and I want it to include five. All I need to do is click on it, click on your formula bar. Once you click on your formula bar, you can see what is included in that formula. It's highlighted in blue. And you can see this angle here. This angle is what I need to use to include the five. So I just need to drag it off, and then that includes the five, and enter. And that includes everything. If I don't want it to include all these blank spaces on the nine, I can just drag this and drag this up and enter. And that includes it. If I want to move this 31, this total, just to the base, you can just click on, make sure it's selected. When it changes to this arrow, just move it. And then you have moved it. If, however, I want to copy this 200, but I don't want to copy the formula, I just want 200 in a different cell. You can copy and, play and paste value. And what you do is, if you, when you copy it, I want just 200 here. I don't want to copy the formula. If you right click, there are some paste options. You have more paste options here. And what this is doing, this is a paste value, one, two, three. So this is a regular paste. It will paste your formula. You can see behind that even without clicking it, you can see that it's, it's zero because it's looking at the top and it's trying to add whatever is there, but there's nothing there, so it's zero. But I just want to paste 200 on its own without the formula. So I will select this and then that is 200. So you can see, you can either copy the form. So when you do a straight copy, it would copy the formula you have. But if you don't want it to copy the formula, you have to choose a paste value. I would, I would do a formula. So this is still, this is still selected. This, uh, this is still on my clipboard. If I put it here and paste, it has, well, it has pasted it. It has actually pasted the formula, but because I have 200 here, I'm going to change that to 50. So this is copying the formula. So this has copied the formula. I just want to copy just 200. If I place it here, I have to do paste value. And then I have just 200. You can also have other options. Once you finish, once, once you paste, you have other paste options here. So for instance, so like this 200 has pasted, but the format did not paste. So if I want to paste it with that format, all I need to do is change pick that option, this option here, and then it will paste the format. I'm going to delete all this. So this is, our, this is our list. We want to number this list. For instance, if you want to know the number of items you want to buy. So we can literally just number one, two, three, four, five. We can number one, two, three, four, five. However, the best way to do it on Excel is if you want to number, 
I'm just going to delete this. If you start with one and drag this one down, if I drag it down, you can either do two things. You can copy the one all the way down, or you can fill a series. So in this case, I want it to fill a series, and it has copied one all the way down. Once you drag it down, it will show you this box here. And this is where you pick the option of what you want. In this case, I want it to fill the series. So I want it to be numbered one to 10. And that is what it has done. So I've changed it to fill series and it's filled it down. You can, you can copy, you can, if you do copy cell, it will just copy the one, that one down. Fill formatting, it, only, it will only format. It would not, uh, it will not copy the number or fill the series. Fill without formatting. It will fill the numbers, but it will not fill with the formatting. So we want it to fill to fill series. And that is, we have it uh, from one to 10. And you can, it, you can just drag, you can drag it as, if you continue to drag it, you know, it will continue to fill that series until you stop. Another type of series that you can fill in uh, Excel is, for instance, if you, have, if you have days of the week, you can fill this down. It will continue to fill it. If you just want to copy it, if you choose copy cells, it will just drag the Monday down. But we want it to fill series. So you can just fill series, just uh, pick the option of fill series, and then it fills it down. And it will continue to just repeat the same thing till you stop. Uh, let my stuff come. Oh, we thought that was done printing, done showing data. Okay. Oh, shit, one. Let's do some other, some other basic code. Uh, basic uh, formula in Excel. Uh, so we have one, I'm gonna delete this. So if you have like names on a spreadsheet, this, uh, I'm just gonna put some names. And then uh, Steve, Jane, Carl. Okay, so you have a spreadsheet with names and they've been tied with a, like a, the first letter is not a capital letter. Instead of typing, so if you want to correct this, you can either like click, click through, delete the A and type the A in capital letter, right? But however, if you have like a long list of names that you need to correct, we all know that, you know, names ideally should start with like, should be proper, is a proper noun and should start with a capital letter. If you have a long list of names to correct, you can use a function called proper because you want to make it a proper noun. And what it does is it will change the first letter to capital. So I have uh, all this and I start with my equal to, then I type proper because I want to change it to proper, proper noun. I'll open a bracket, I'll click on the cell and close the bracket and enter. And what I've done is I've changed that Steve to a proper noun. Now it starts with S. And I don't have to type that again for Jane and Carl. All I need to do is just go to my bottom right here and just drag that down. And then I have Jane and Carl as a capital. If I drag it to Adam, it will still be the same thing because I've manually changed that. If you have a, so this is Adam and I'm gonna copy this. I'll paste value somewhere else. Paste, I just need value. And the reason why I paste, I'm pasting using the paste value is to remove the formula. So if you have like a, this was they're written in a, this is proper, and I want it all in lowercase. I can literally just change that back to lowercase by using a formula called lower. So I can make it equal to 
lower, open a bracket, click on it, close the bracket and enter. And that is lower. I can make it, I can change it to all uppercase using upper. So it would be equal to upper, open a bracket, click on it, and it's all in uppercase. And this is very useful when you have, when you're working with a lot of data and you need to like manually change it. So you can just put a formula in, you know, to change that from lowercase to uppercase or from uppercase to proper, whatever you want to change it to. You can either use a proper function to change it to proper noun. You can use the lowercase, lower function to change it to lower, and you can use the upper to change it to upper. See, on the tax bar, you have your formula here. And this formula, you can do like a, a lot of functions. So like the sum that we used just now would be under, under math and tree. So you have sum, you can have a, you know, sum if, that if you want to put a condition to your sum. So, but that is more like intermediate Excel. So you can say you, you want something to sum if a certain condition is present. You can use your sum if. You can look for, for uh, functions here to use. So we use, I think we use, a, we did use sum, we use average. We have some lookup uh, functions and lookup, what lookup does, it, it's, uh, it's more like referencing, like if you want to like pull data, from different uh, places, you can use your lookup functions. You want to like uh, find the data somewhere else that matches the data here and pull that data in. You have a lot of lookup functions that can be used. We have the date and time functions that you can use to, for instance, calculate probably how many days, uh, how many working days you have in a particular period of time. How many days are in between this date and another date? You can use your date and time functions. Text functions are one of the ones we've used, like the lower. You can uh, you can use the left if you want to, like uh, you, have, you have a word, you just want like maybe the first three letters on the left, you can use a left function for that. You want so three letters in the middle of the, a text, you can use a mid function. You want like two letters, at the side of the text, you can use the right, right function. We have logical, which is, uh, it's more like, you know, when, uh, when you want to know if a certain condition is fulfilled, you use a logical function. Like if this is equal to this, then you can now create like, a, you can now add it to like a math function. So there are many functions you can use. One, when we did the sum, I need to show us the shortcuts to the sum. So we have some shortcuts here. And this sum, you can actually use it to add numbers together. I'll delete this 200. So instead of equal to sum, I'm selecting the cell. I can literally just click on this sum function. And then what it does, it, it looks around that cell and looks at what you, what you think you want to sum. And it puts, you know, highlights it in blue. So in this case, it thinks that this is what I want to sum. That is actually what I want to sum. And I can just do enter. And that is a shortcut to sum. If I don't want to sum that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to undo that. So I'm going to click on sum again. But in this case, I don't want the sum on the total, but I highlighted the total. You can just literally just select what you want the sum on. So I want the sum here and enter. And what is done is I've been able to put the sum on the quantity. So even though it does, even when it doesn't pick what you want to sum, you can just you can literally just change it. I'm going to undo that. So you can just change it to what you want it to, to sum. And that is the sum function. We can filter. I'm going to delete all the things around. 
And I want to, I want to filter this, uh, this data. And the way you filter is, uh, you have to put filters on the data. I want to filter this data. For instance, I want to probably maybe my filter, I just want to select items that cost less than five pounds, for instance. I have a filter here that I can use. If I go to data, I can do filter. And what is done is it's put arrows on the heading, and I can use that to filter the data. So for instance, uh, this price, if I click on price, I have items costing two, three, five, five, eight, nine pounds. I want only items costing three pounds and, and less. So I can just unselect, click on three, click on two, and okay. And what it has done, is it has actually filtered this data. So I can only see the ones with prices uh, three pounds and below. That's, that's because I've, I've used the filter. I want to clear the filter. I want everything to show. I can I just do a select all. Okay, I'll undo that. Or I can do clear filter from price. I'll undo that. If I have filters in a lot of places, I can do clear here and that will clear the filter. So filter is really good when you have you know, a lot of data on the spreadsheet and you want to look at a particular bit at a time. We'll look more into filters when we do tomorrow, when we do the essentials tomorrow. So we're gonna be looking at filters and we're gonna be looking at how to turn this into, into charts tomorrow. I hope this session has been useful. I will not, I think we're over time. If you have any questions, do let me know. And we can take your questions quickly before we finish tonight. Otherwise, we would uh, we'll continue tomorrow at 8 p.m. Thanks for coming. I hope it has been useful. I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Grateful. Thank you. Thank you.